Welcome back to another special episode of Organic Chemistry, and today is the first episode in a new series called Toxic, Falsifying Scientific Data. So today we're going to talk about a paper that is a method paper, and what these authors report is that you can convert esters into thionoesters using thiourea. If you normally want to make a thionoester, the most common method of doing this is to use Lawson's reagent, which is kind of like a Wittig, but it converts carbonyls into thiocarbonyls. Here's a reference to a paper that discusses all of the uses of Lawson's reagent. Now, if you do want to use thiourea to put sulfur onto something, you can take an epoxide, and upon treatment with thiourea, this will convert epoxides into episulfides, the sulfur version of an epoxide. Here's a reference that you can look at if you wanted to do this type of transformation. However, despite the fact that the authors report that thiourea can be used to convert esters into thionoesters, thiourea cannot convert esters into thionoesters, at least not under the conditions that they report, nor am I familiar with any conditions which do allow that to occur. So the background. So normally, if you take a carbonyl and you want to convert it to a thiocarbonyl, this is what you do. You just treat it with Lawson's reagent, and depending on what type of carbonyl it is, you require different conditions. Certain amides will go at room temp, but esters will usually require 150 degrees because they're not that electrophilic and they're quite stubborn. Now, it's essentially a Wittig, just you form a four-membered ring with a sulfur instead of a carbon as you typically would for a Wittig. So I've done a lot of these, and there are some reactions that will fail. So if you have a very, very electron-poor ester, they will not react with Lawson's reagent, or it'll only be a couple percent, and that's basically impossible to isolate for thionoesters. So if you wanted to make an episulfide, you can just take an epoxide and treat it with thiourea. This will convert it to an episulfide. I've tested this with styrene oxide before, and the reaction does work. So now what it is that these authors report in this paper is they report the treatment of esters with thiourea, and they say that it forms thionoesters. Thiourea melts at 180 degrees. They do this neat with thiourea, with an excess of thiourea, and they say that they do it in an autoclave. So I tried this reaction, but instead of using an autoclave, I just put it in a sealed vial and I got it so hot that the thiourea melted and I left it as a melt mixing overnight. So over 16 hours, no reaction happened whatsoever. I did a GCMS and I couldn't even detect any other products forming whatsoever, which is typical for my chemistry involving thionoesters. Easily they can be tracked using GCMS. Now, the one thing that's kind of frustrating in this paper is they only included one experimental uh, piece of data, including NMR data, and that was for ethyl benzoate. So because I wanted to use this method to access thionoesters, I started with ethyl benzoate because that's what they used. So the re reaction that they reported to be clear is they took ethyl benzoate and they treated it with thiourea in an autoclave for four hours, and they say that it forms ethyl thionobenzoate. So their reported data is that they take a gram of ethyl benzoate, a nice convenient number, and thiourea, they seal it up, they heat it in their autoclave for four hours. Afterwards, they do a typical workup. They then distill their product using an oil bath, and it forms their product as a colorless oil in 92% yield. And then they report some characterization data. So there's several issues in this procedure, and you're about to see why. So the first issue is that if you were to heat a thionoester thermally, not under partial vacuum, not with a steam distillation, this will actually cause the rearrangement of a thionoester into a thioester. So that C double bond S converts to a C double bond O, and the OR group converts to an, an SR group. So this rearrangement reaction is well known in thiocarbonyl chemistry. So they, they say they distill it, they don't make any comments about distillation. Maybe they forgot it, but maybe not. Okay. In his pure form, ethyl thionobenzoate is a yellow oil, and they report it as a colorless oil. Now, I've synthesized this multiple ways. If you make it using Lawson's reagent, even if you do chromat chromatography, it will appear orange, and this is just due to trace uh, contaminants. However, if you treat the orange version with uh, sodium ethoxide in, eth in ethanol, it'll clean it up and it'll convert it to a yellow oil. Or if you synthesize it in an alternative way, you'll get it as a yellow oil. And so, in their paper, they report the chemical shift of ethyl benzoate, as you can see right here, 4.40. Now, if you look in the literature, the chemical shift of ethyl benzoate for this specific proton pair is 4.4. And actually, if you look in the literature, the chemical shift of ethyl thionobenzoates, OCH2, is 4.64. So that's a discrepancy. 0.2 ppm is not trivial, especially in cases like this. 
So in general, if you make an ester and then you make its thionoester derivative, it increases the chemical shift by 0.3 ppm, which is about the difference that you see here. And additionally, I want to point out that ethyl benzoate has a boiling point of 213. When you increase, uh, you typically increase the boiling point of an ester when you convert it to the thionoester by about 50 degrees, which would mean that the expected boiling point of their compound should be about 250 degrees. And here you can see they report the boiling point at 190 degrees Celsius. They don't give us a pressure, so all we can do is assume that that's at atmospheric pressure. If they did it under reduced pressure, then the fact that they gave us this value is pretty useless. So all of those things are major causes for concern. Now, this is one of the two reactions that you can do to actually make loss, uh, to make ethyl thionobenzoate, just treat ethyl benzoate with Lawson's reagent. Or alternatively, you can take this methyl thionobenzoate, treat it with sodium ethoxide and ethanol, and you'll get ethyl thionobenzoate. This is a nice fast reaction. So if we look on SDBS, which is a free site where you can get access to spectra such as IRs and NMRs for most common compounds, you can see that this is the this is the spectrum of ethyl benzoate, and you can see that the CH2 has a chemical shift of 4.355 or about 4.4, okay? So that's the reported chemical shift. Now, if you look in the literature and you look at this example of ethyl thionobenzoate, you can see that that CH2 has a chemical shift of about 4.7-ish, 4.6. And in both cases, these are in CDCL3. This is in CDCL3, deuterated chloroform, okay? And so I contacted the author because the author had contact info in that paper. And so essentially I said, hey, I have all these issues that I just described to you, the listener, right now. And they never responded. So after a while, I decided to contact the journal uh, after a few months, you can see. And so I basically say, hey, I had this issue, contacted the author, didn't work. I would like to use their chemistry if it works. Uh, but it doesn't work, and are you planning on doing anything about it? I can guarantee you I've made this before, and this compound should uh, not be what they say it is, because it isn't. And so they responded and saying, all they said was, oh, you've already alerted the author, so there isn't anything else we do. It's like, uh, your reputation's on the line, Springer. You're not going to do anything about this? Are you serious? I could like definitively prove to you that their data is falsified. They had one example in their whole paper with any data and they falsified that and they did a really bad job at every level. Okay. And so I contacted them again and I said like, uh, are you serious? Basically, like you should like make sure that this gets taken out. And so then they said, oh, we'll pass it forward to the journal team for handling. And they never emailed me again. So this is how much publishers care about fake science. This is how much they care. Uh, if you go online now, you can still try and get access to that article. And if you don't have uh, university credentials, you can pay money for that BS article. So this is the state of science, even in 2022. So what can you do? If you're a principal investigator or if you're a reviewer, if you have several researchers, you can get them to do a quick experiment if it's easy to test their chemistry. Now, yes, that's a it's a lot to ask of you, but I think this is the only way that science moves forward by verifying, because people will cheat. If you have uh, lab jobs in your lab, this could even be a rotating lab job. If you review enough papers, uh, then it could make sense to have it as a regular thing. Yes, it's asking a lot, but you're doing a huge service to the scientific community. If they have obscure reagents, obviously that's like harder to do. But if you do test it, you can make the journal similar to Organic Synthesis, which is an extremely reputable journal because prior to publication, other checkers have to reproduce the procedure and they will report the yields of the checkers. And so if science is to be reproducible, especially chemistry, you have to be able to reproduce. And if you're not willing to reproduce, then you have to be comfortable knowing that the science that people are trying to propose could be false. But if you're a journal and someone tries to reproduce an experiment and they can't, you should at the very least be concerned because the integrity of your entire organization relies on your ability to be trusted. So it's hard. Obviously, it's hard to check. But if someone has checked, you need to listen. So be honest. Don't ever falsify data. It's not worth taking shortcuts. And if you're a journal, listen. So hopefully this has been an entertaining lecture about falsifying data. Hopefully you learned something. It would really help out the channel if you left a like and subscribe and comment down below if you like this new form of content. Have a great day.